Well, good morning, Calvary. Thanks for tuning in today for your word for the day. Hope you're having a great day wherever you're watching from. Got a question for you. Have you ever had someone give you a goal that felt unattainable? Maybe it was a coach that said you need to double your personal record in a run time or a lift or some competition. It just didn't seem like that was realistic. Maybe your boss said that you needed to double your productivity or sales number in a week and that just seemed completely impossible. Or maybe even worse, your extended family asked you to drive across the country with a van full of toddlers uh, to visit them for the holidays and you just could not see a way that that was possible. I don't know what impossible goal or objective has been put before you. But I do know that today, as we look at Ephesians chapter 5, this episode is specifically for men and um, even more specifically those that are married men uh, because us as husbands are given a goal that on the surface can seem unattainable but is so important for us to hear and apply to our life today. So Ephesians chapter 5, we're going to see God lay out His design for our role and kind of posture as husbands and how we're to love and lead our families. Ephesians 5, starting in verse 25, says, Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave Himself up for her, that He might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that He might present the church to Himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own body. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church. Husbands, we're given some instructions here that if we want our wives to love us, and if we read back a few verses, this passage actually starts with saying, wives, we're to, to submit to us as husbands, It's so easy to stop there and just put it all on our wives and say, this is what you're to do. But they're actually to do that in response to us following Jesus' example and model for loving the church as a way for us to love and lead our wives. So today, I want to challenge you in four ways that Jesus loved the church and served the church as a model for us to love and lead and care for our wives. The first thing is that Jesus... Jesus uh, labored for the benefit of the church. He worked hard. He labored, did things uh, physically, mentally, hard work for the benefit of the people he led. And and that might be kind of the baseline for what we're to do. We're to, to labor and sacrifice and provide for our families. That's the easy thing, though, if we're being honest. That's what we're wired to do. That's what we uh, feel comfortable doing. Jesus did that. We can do that but it gets harder with each following one because the second thing is that that Jesus put his needs and desires below the needs and desires of others in terms of priorities. And this gets a little harder for us. We think about putting our needs, desires, wants lower on the priority scale than the needs and desires and wants of our spouse, the needs and desires of our family, our kids, our wife. But that's exactly what we're to do. If we're to love like Jesus loved the church, we have to say, your needs and desires and wants are more important and a higher priority than mine. The third thing that Jesus did is that he served for the benefit of the church. He he gave himself. Jesus said, the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and give his life as a ransom for many. And yet it's so easy for us as husbands to think that our wives are there for the sole purpose of serving us. When we've got that completely backwards, we're there to serve them. We're there to provide, but also to sacrifice and and serve and help them and to say, hey, how can I help you? How can I bless you? How can I make your day better today? And it gets us into the fourth thing we see from Jesus is that Jesus sacrificed himself for the church. Ultimately, we're here as followers of Jesus because of that truth, because Jesus died on a cross to pay for our sins, and he said, I'm going to sacrifice my life for you. And whenever I read this passage, I know that that is the goal. That is the standard where Jesus says, husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church. I picture Jesus on a cross, and I ask him, am I willing to go to that level to love and lead my wife? Now, I'm not saying that you should go run out on the highway in front of a speeding semi just because, but I am saying, are you willing to sacrifice things in your life? Are you willing to lay things down to love and to lead your wife? Are you willing to sacrifice your desires? Are you willing to sacrifice your hobbies and activities? Are you willing to sacrifice your wants 
for the good of your marriage and for the blessing and benefit of your wife, because that's the standard that Jesus has laid out for us. And yesterday I challenged the women to, to look at their section here in Ephesians 5 and say, are you going to trust and follow the design that God has laid out in scripture for your marriage? And guys, I'm gonna challenge you in the same way. Are you going to read this and say, God, this is hard and there's places in this that I may not like or be comfortable with, but I know that this is truth that will bless and benefit me and my marriage. And will you take it and apply it today? Will you labor for them? Will you put their needs and priorities above their own? Will you serve them? And finally, will you sacrifice for them? Because these are things that Jesus did for us and also did as an example for how we're to lead and love our wives. So I hope that you have a great day and follow Jesus' example and loving and leading your family. We'll see you next time.